I might put the shades on. The weather's got really bad. Let's get it going! Hello people, welcome back to the channel. I'm sure most of you will recognise that view. And if you don't, you'll certainly recognise that view, which is the giveaway where I am. Yeah, I'm in the Western Lakes. So I've parked at Wasdale Head and I've made my way along back down the road. And I'm just about to turn off up to Netherbeck, which will take me to uh, Scope Tarn. My plan then, is to carry on to uh, Scope Fell and camp there for the night. Potentially, I'm going to be here for two nights, so three days. But as you can see, it's nice blue sky and sunny now. But tomorrow, the forecast is going to change. It's predicting 30 mile an hour winds. Mountain weather are giving snow, light snow. Mountain forecasts are giving light rain. So I'll have to see what the weather does tomorrow, whether I stay another night or not. I've got enough provisions, so it's all down to the weather and the mountain gods to decide for me whether I stay or not. But what a beautiful spot this is, absolutely stunning. I love the western part of the lakes, it's where all the big ones are. So you've got Yee Barra, you've got the Scarfells, and Great Gable over there. And then behind me, you've got the screes running into uh, Was Water. And you've got Win, uh, Winrig and Ilgill Head. Camped up there, that's a good one to do. There's a bit of a tarn in the middle, so you don't have to drag water up there. But yeah, there's a little bit of snow still on Scarfell. I'm not predicting that there'll be any on uh, Scout Fell. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Right, I'm going to have a few minutes here, taking the views, and then start making my way up. What a lovely spot that would be for a picnic on a sunny day, a sunny warm day. What a great spot. I've got time today. Keep going. For army break, I'll diversion. I've just come across this little, uh, this little flat bit here. This would make a cracking, uh, cracking spot to pitch. It's right in the middle of the valley, right next to the water. So it's just down there. Only the problem is. You'd be up past the night wanting to pee with that. Yeah, what a little oasis this is. Nice little level pitch there. Get your tent on there. Perfect. 
So I'm still following uh, Netherbeck, which is what this is. And it goes up and around, and then up to uh, Sculpt, uh, Sculpt Tarn, which is what this comes out of. So I'm probably about halfway. So I just thought I'd stop here, lovely spot. Gorgeous sunshine, there's a bit of a breeze which is keeping me cool, so it's quite pleasant. It's just a shame tomorrow, the weather's gonna change. If it were like this for a few days, it'd be perfect. Right, pepper army break. And I'll keep going. Right, so I've literally reached the head of the valley and this is where the path splits so if I follow it to the left I'll end up up there which is Haycock don't want to go that way so I'm going to go to the right which will take me um, up to Scout Tarn which is up there behind me that sort of bowl shaped thing I've not seen a single person since I've been on this valley not one not that I'm complaining, but yeah. I've seen a few people on the tops, but I've not seen anyone. Right, got Middle Fell there, Sea uh, Talon there, that's a knee cruncher if you've done that one. Yeah, I've been up that one this way, and that is a knee cruncher, especially with a heavy pack on. I've camped on Haycock about two or three years ago camped up there with a good mate of mine Bob he was 71 at the time and he's uh, still wild camping so I imagine he's sort of 74ish now just goes to show that uh, age is just a number if you want it to be if you mind it tells you to go out gets you fit you do whatever you want just because you're a certain age keep going and that's what he does still hiking still wild camping in his mid 70s now fair play to him he's a nice bloke as well really good bloke right I'm gonna carry on get myself up to Scopes Tarn So this is Scope Tarn, and what a great little tarn it is. You can just see at that end, it's almost like an infinity pool, where it sort of dif disappears off into the horizon. The big lump in the middle is uh, Sea Talon that you can see sticking up. So um, I've just fired the, uh, the wind burner up. I'm just gonna have a brew and stuff. Chill out here for a bit, have something to eat. I'm not in any hurry. But where I'm heading, 
which is Scout Fell. He's up there behind me. So I've not got that far to go really. There is like a dry stone wall that runs along it. So with the weather that's predicted in the morning, I'm going to try and pitch behind it. Just give me a little bit of shelter. Um, and Scout Fell has got an interesting summit, which I'll show you when I get up there. Yeah, it's uh, if you weren't looking for it, you'd probably walk straight past it because you wouldn't realise that was the summit. But yeah, I'm going to chill out here for a bit. I'm not in any hurry, like I say. The sun's shining, kind of keeps disappearing behind the cloud and then I'll get some water get packed up again and make my way up there right catch you in a bit Actually, uh, starting to nod off then. Time to get moving. So, make our way up that way. Follow the, uh, the spring up and then get some water at a higher point. So, I'm not carrying water higher up than what I need to. Right, let's get going. Come on then. You as well. Right, so I've just followed this uh, this little spring up. So it's uh, coming out of the ground there. So I've followed it all the way up. So I'm just going to get some water from it here. Down there. But it just saves you dragging it all the way up. And the tarn, which is down there. I need to... Uh, Two litres, which is another two kilos of weight. So, follow the spring up. It is on the map. Just follow it all the way up until it disappears into the ground. And there's a little bit flowing here over a rock. So I'll get some water from here. And I've only got to go up there and then across. I'm not that far. Right, let's get some water. little tip that I've always done if you're going to be putting your hands in the water when you're getting it out of streams and stuff I always bring a little bottle of hand sanitizer because um, you never really know what's in the water it just keeps everything clean doesn't it so, right bag back on up to the top and then off to the right and off to scope the fell
believe it or not, that was a pile of, uh, of rocks on the wall. It was actually the summit of little little scope fell. Ice point right on top of the wall. Told you it was a funny one. Right, over that way is Scopes Fell or Great Scope Fell. So I think I might pitch in between. The wind's going to be coming from this way, so the other side of that wall. So I'm going to go and pitch over there, I think. I've not seen anyone all day. And as soon as I've got here, there's people everywhere. It's typical, isn't it? Right. I'm going to go and find somewhere to pitch. And I think I'll just take in some views and kill a bit of time. It's too early to pitch just yet. Right, let's go and have a wander over that way. Right, so I finally got pitched up. And I'm just down from Great Scope Fell, which is just over there behind me. So the summit's kind of just up there. So I've just got to sort of come down in a bit of a dip. Um, back in the Hillyberg solo. Black label and we've kind of got a bit of a sunset going on but it keeps clagging in it kind of disappears and then it's reappeared like it is now so i've got a bit of a time lapse going on over there so see what that turns out see if it turns out any good so i'll give you nosy in the tent i'm still in winter gear um So, still with me Alpkit Alpine 1000 bag and my Nemo pillow and then the Thermarest X Therm mat which is the wide version so you can see it, it clearly fits in the solo, no problem at all. I know some people have, uh, have commented asking if the wide will fit in but yeah it fits in no problem, There's room on the other side. So. Green bag's got my electrics, food pouch, um, and then my wash kit and teas and coffees in the orange bag. And then I've got my rab booties and my beanie for later. And then the wind burner and my water and everything just kind of sits nicely in the porch. And then as you can see, I normally put the, uh, the rucksack at the head end. So you can see there's, there's plenty of room with the mat. It's uh, quite easily fits. So, I've not seen anyone now for, for a good hour or so. Um, it's just gone six o'clock. I think it gets dark about seven now. So I've probably got about an hour of daylight. But there you go, look, it's, it's cleared again while I've been talking. So you can see a nice sunset. So it should be a good time lapse. Should turn out okay. So I'm going to get myself a brew on, watch this sunset, and think about making some tea. It is starting to go cold, quite bitterly cold. So I've cracked a few hand warmers up and put them in my pockets. So yeah, this should be my sort of last winter camp really, because we are just on the verge of spring here in the UK. Um, the clocks go forward in about another week's time so it'll be lighter at night and uh, we're not so far off Easter now so yeah this yeah this should be sort of my, my last camp where I'm in sort of full winter gear so I can start bringing out the lighter gear <laughs> as it gets warmer right I'm gonna make myself a brew and watch this Sun go down
turn that off so I don't get a copyright against me. I actually got into my sleeping bag and I thought I'll just have 10 minutes and I actually nodded off for about 40 minutes. So I've woken up and um, it's pitch black outside now. So I'm just uh, letting my tea rehydrate. I'm on um, chicken fajita and rice tonight. I normally bring a little can of uh, cider with me and I've not got it. So I must have left it in the car. I'm gutted. Um, I was really looking forward to that, so I'm just going to have to drink some water. That's, uh, that's all I've got. So yeah. I don't think it's dropped out my rucksack. I hope it's not anyway. I don't think it has. It must be in the car. I must have left it. So um, I'll just check the weather as well for tomorrow. And it looks like the weather front has moved sort of into the next day. So the weather for tomorrow is looking better. Although it's still saying uh, light snow from 9 o'clock until midday. But the wind speeds have dropped. Um, it's giving sort of 20 to 30 now. Whereas before it was giving 20 to 40. Um, so I'm just going to see how it is in the morning. And see what the weather's like. I'd like to do another day. If I can. I'd like to go sort of back over. Uh, back up to the summit. And then over to. Uh, over to Pillar. And then drop down off Pillar. And then probably go round Kirk Fell and then make my way over to sort of Great Gable and, and camp over that way somewhere and, and just make another night of it. Um, like I said before, I've got enough provisions, I've got enough food. So um, it just depends on the weather tomorrow. If it's absolutely throwing it down um, or it's sleet and it's it's like 30 odd 40 odd mile an hour winds then it's it's pointless because it'll be totally clagged in i won't be able to see anything and I'm, I'm not spending a day just getting completely battered by the weather um so yeah i'll just have to uh play it by and see what the weather does tomorrow so uh right i'm gonna uh tuck him to my chicken fajita and then i might have a brew actually as well might make a brew. I've got some extra coffee sachets. Um, don't really fancy the water. But yeah, right. Get something to eat. I'll bring you back in a bit. Right, I'm fed and watered. Literally watered. No beer, just water. So uh, I'm going to get some shut eye after I've had this hot chocolate. Um, the wind's really picking up now. Can hear it outside, so I uh, don't know what the wind speed is, but yeah, it's really picking up. I've double pegged it on the windward end, um, and I've put rocks on the pegs, so it shouldn't go anywhere. So uh, been a good day today. I've enjoyed it. Nice sunny day. Um, still a little bit chilly, but yeah, it was, it's uh, it's nice to hike in the decent weather. I do like winter camping, but once you've done it for you know for a good few months you, you kind of are looking forward to the better weather you know lighter nights and warmer weather and not bringing the winter gear so you've got quite a you know a lighter rucksack and everything so kind of i'm looking forward to uh you know to a bit of summer camping and stuff so uh tomorrow it all depends on what the weather does so I'll we'll have to see uh I'll have to see in the morning. I'll check the weather forecast again in the morning. But yeah, it is forecast to uh to snow at nine o'clock. So uh if I am gonna do two nights, I need to get this tent as dry as possible because I don't want to be lugging a wet tent around. It's gonna be make it even more heavier. So right, I'm gonna finish this hot chocolate and get some shut eye. It's been a long day. But yeah. I shall see you all in the morning, night for now.
weather's got really bad. It started about two o'clock and it's just got worse and worse. It's now snowing outside. It's quarter past five. So I'm gonna get myself out of the sleeping bag and get ready to bail at about six o'clock in the morning when it comes light. And just get out of here. Yeah, it was forecast wet bad weather but not this bad. Standing strong, good old Hillyburg. Right, I'm gonna get myself sorted and get ready to go. Right, I'm all set, all packed up, waterproofs on. Um, I don't know what film I'm gonna be able to do. Uh, obviously, my priority is to get get out of here, get this tent down, and get off of here safely. But I will film what I can film. So. It's a total white out. I'll let you have a look. Can't see much. So yeah, I definitely won't be staying for another night. Right, let's get on with it. Let's get this tent down, back in the rucksack. Let's get it going. That's only 20 mile an hour. Goes to show all the hype with wind speed. That's only 20 mile an hour. Right, gonna get the tent down. Right, if you can hear me, bags on back. Leave no trace. Right, let's get going. Woo. Right, if you can hear me, I'm going to follow the wall to uh, Little Scope Fell and then I'm going to veer off to the right and get myself back down. I'll bring you back when I'm a bit further down. Well, that was fun. <laughs> right, so I've got that, I've got halfway down and back at, uh, at Scope Town. So uh, I've dropped down from Scope Fell. What, I've, what I'm gonna do is what I don't normally do. I'm just gonna follow the route back down the valley and back the way that I came. I was gonna go over Red Pike, but it's totally clagged in. You can see it up there. You can't see anything, it's blowing a gale. As I've got lower and lower, 
the wind's obviously got less, the snow's gone. But yeah, it's it's kind of pointless going back that way, which is a shame. Obviously, I'm not going to be staying for two nights now. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get myself back down. Right. Keep following the stream down and then get back into the valley. You wouldn't think this was the same valley that I was in yesterday. Glorious sunshine yesterday, blue skies. Look at it now. We have had so much rain this winter. It's been ridiculous. And you can guarantee, the first couple of hot days, local council will be asking us to use our water sparingly. Bring on summer, that's what I say. The rocks are really slippy, so it's been really slow going. So I've not done much filming, but I've not got that far to go now. I'll get myself back on the road and then back to, uh, back to the car. But yeah, it's absolutely sodden everywhere. Right. Keep going, not far now. Right, I've not got that far to go now. I'm nearly at the road. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to sign off now. It was a good one, it was. Yesterday obviously was better. Last night, yeah, very, very windy. And then this morning, snow and just constant rain. But to be fair, it's what was predicted. Unfortunately, I didn't get the two nights that I wanted. But these mountains have been here for millions of years, so can always come back another day and do a two-nighter. The Hilleberg did its job, it kept me safe. I know there's a lot of speculation about Hilleberg tents, they're overpriced, they're overkill for the UK market, but last night that tent was bulletproof. Pitched correctly, they're a solid tent and they are a good investment. And in my opinion, I know a lot of people will disagree, I think they're one of the best tents on the market. So. Thanks for watching, and as always, catch you on the next one. Bye for now.